In this video, I'm going to start on the discussion about mineral absorption. And so in this one, I'll probably only get to the sodium potassium ATPase in the sodium hydrogen exchanger. And so we can see on this, so if we're looking at just the small intestine cells here, uh, this is the sodium hydrogen exchanger. So sodium is Na, that's why it's an N, and then hydrogen is H, that's why it's an H. Then down here we have the sodium potassium ATPase, which uh, as the name suggests, requires energy, it requires ATP in order to uh, in order to pump three sodiums out of the cell and two potassiums into the cell. And so most cells uh, try to maintain sort of a, a sort of similar ionic composition, which is usually low calcium, low sodium and high potassium and neutral pH. And so we can see here, uh, and this one right here, this uh, glucose sodium transporter, I'll probably get to uh, in a future video, probably, well, definitely not the next video, but maybe the one after that. Uh, so we're looking at this sodium hydrogen transporter here, and I'll be looking at the uh, sodium potassium ATPase. And as you can see, there are other ones uh, like this uh, chloride and bicarbonate transporter here and then this potassium and chloride transporter here that I probably won't actually be looking at. Um, you know, there, there are just too many different types of transporters like this to go through that uh, I'm essentially just going to be going through some of the ones that I guess you could say are exemplary of this. In the next video, I'll be talking a bit about calcium and magnesium transport. Uh, so the other thing to notice on this is that this shows where some different uh, infections, so this EPEC, which is uh, E. coli, uh, and then this NSP4, which uh, if we look down here is rotavirus non-structural protein. Uh, so just a bunch of different types of uh, of bacteria in particular affect these um, these mineral transporters, these ion transporters in the in the uh, intestine, and so as we saw in the last video about aquaporins, you know these solutes, these ions, these minerals can change the osmotic pressure. Uh, within you know within cells and outside of cells and so a lot of this is kind of where things like diarrhea come from is having too much like uh, too much water sort of escaping into the intestines uh, because maybe uh, say if these things are uh, right here in green here and this these bacteria are sort of inhibiting these these pumps here, then you'll end up with way too much sodium here in the intestinal lumen, and that will create an, an osmotic gradient where water is going to leak out of the cells into the intestinal lumen, and that can cause diarrhea. Uh, so anyway, let's look at the sodium potassium ATPase. Uh, which you'll often see as NKA, so N for Na sodium, K for K potassium, and A for the ATPase. And so this is just the structure of it, and this kind of uh, has, you know, the glycosylation sites up here sort of um, uh, labeled, and then the, the beta subunit, and then the, the alpha subunit and the alpha subunit is broken up into these different domains. So it's two different proteins, but then these the alpha protein is broken up into several different domains. And we see there's cholesterols here uh, and here. And that would be where it's sort of bound into the uh, cell membrane. And so there's a lot of cholesterols in cell membranes, cholesterols. Uh, help to regulate sort of the the fluidity of cell membranes. 
And so that is the structure of this. And so uh, one of the reasons I like to show structures is because these cartoons are really nice for sort of uh, showing mechanisms, but it's always good to remember that these are proteins. So they're these sort of complex biological machines uh, and they work by undergoing, you know, numerous different types of conformational changes and stuff where this cartoon is nice for getting sort of a schematic of it, but, you know, you lose that sort of idea of these as molecular machines. And so if we look here, what we have going on uh, is we have the sodium binding onto here. So three sodiums will bind into it. Uh, and then over here in the next phase, the sodiums release out into the extracellular space. And then in the next step, these potassiums, which are represented by these orange ovals. So two of them come into here, uh, and then those will come out into the cytoplasm. So inside the cell. And so we see that this, uh, this ATP uh, is being, uh, is being dephosphorylated. So it's being hydrolyzed into ADP. And I'll actually go through this mechanism in a little bit more detail here. Uh, so if we look over at this here, I wanted to show, so inside the cell, we usually have around 15 millimolar sodium and 120 millimolar potassium. So inside the cell is, as I said before, high potassium, but low sodium. Uh, and then the extracellular fluid here. So we see here that these sodiums are being pumped out. So in the extracellular fluid, it's kind of flipped where now we have this high sodium concentration and this low potassium concentration. And this is seen sort of all throughout the body in places like the muscles and the heart and the brain and stuff where uh, particularly where, you know, action potentials are used to as cellular communication. All right, so if we want to get a little bit more of a detailed look at this mechanism, so this actually shows different structures here. Uh, so they are actually different structures, but they're in different points of uh, actually having having the ions being moved through an ATP bound. So if we look here in this first part, uh, we have, uh, you can kind of see that little blue thing there that is supposed to be our ATP. So our ATP is bound uh, and that sort of opens up this channel right here, which is where these three sodiums will come in. And so we can see here, this is an ATP analog they have bound in here. And so you can see that bound down there. Uh, we have sort of this empty area here for the sodiums. Uh, but then the sodiums come in when the ATP, uh, when the ATP binds to it. And so now you can see we have these sodiums here uh, these spheres in here bound in there. And so that is how the sodium comes in there. Uh, then we actually have the ATP hydrolysis. So uh, the ATP hydro hydrolyzed, so the last phosphate, the gamma phosphate comes off of the ATP. And now we have the phosphate, which I don't know if you can see that right there. Uh, and then this blue here is the ADP right there. And so that uh, allows this to undergo a conformational change as the ADP is released out of here. Uh, and so this opens up this channel on the outside here. So you see it's closed right there. Then it opens up, which allows these uh, sodiums to go out of the cell. Uh, and now we have this opened channel here where these potassiums can now come in. And so you can actually see here the, the green spheres where those potassiums have entered uh, into there. And so when those potassiums enter, that actually causes this to close up and then the potassiums will uh, move out through here. Uh, and then that phosphate will actually release. So uh, maybe you can see that little sort of cyan dot right there is the phosphate. So that we see is 
coming out as another ATP uh, joins onto it. And so we need that ATP hydrolysis to sort of uh, cause the opening of, of this channel here so that those sodiums can go out. And the reason we need ATP is because we're moving ions up their gradient. So we're moving it from a, a region of low concentration to a region of high concentration, which uh, is, you know, energetically unfavorable. It's thermodynamically unfavorable. And so moving uh, sodiums out of the cell, which as we saw, sodium out of the cell is at a much higher concentration than in the cell. And then moving potassium into the cell, which we're going from a low concentration to a high concentration. And so that's why we need that energy to move it. All right, so that was the, uh, the sodium potassium pump, which we see is actually here at the basal part of the cell. And so up here is, is the intestinal lumen. And so this is actually sort of exchanging it with, you know, the, the basal tissue here and the blood and things like that. Uh, and so when we are taking in sodium uh, up here, the sodium concentration in the cell will go up. Uh, and so this pump will pump that sodium out back out of the cell uh, in order to, well, one, maintain the sodium concentration in the cell, but also... Uh, two, so that we are having a sort of a net movement of sodium from the intestine into the cell and then back out sort of, you know, into the bloodstream here. And so that is kind of the, the uh, function of that sodium-potassium pump here in the intestine. So over here, this is the sodium-hydrogen exchanger. So now we're looking at this... Uh, at this other, uh, this NH3 here, which is actually on the, the apical side of the cell, so pointing into the, um, the intestinal lumen. And so this is a place where, uh, you know, sodium will be absorbed into the cell, uh, and it also pumps hydrogen out of the cell. And so the, that's kind of, you know, the sodium the human sodium hydrogen exchanger, which uh, has 13 different proteins, are expressed in you know pretty much every kind of tissue. But uh, we're going to be sort of talking about it in the context of digestion here. And so the task of the sodium hydrogen exchangers uh, it, that are located in the plasma membranes is cell volume control. And so that has to do with that osmotic pressure uh, of, you know, the sodium concentration inside the cell and outside the cell, sort of controlling that so that, you know, the movement of water through the cell, through the aquaporins, can be uh, regulated in that way. Uh, but also to regulate the cellular pH. Uh, and so... Uh, so this is actually the cartoon mechanism. I'll go back up to that structure in a second. Uh, and so we see uh, we have this aspartate here. And so we have in green is the, uh, is the hydrogen. So hydrogen in green binds to it. Uh, then this undergoes a conformational change. And it actually releases the hydrogen uh, out here. So out of the cell. Uh, and then we have the sodium come in, and that binds, uh, so sodium is in yellow. Uh, that binds then to this uh, aspartate, which then undergoes another conformational change, bringing it to the internal surface where it can then release that sodium into the cell. And so this is looking at, uh, in, in the purple sphere here, is our sodium. So we can see our sodium kind of held uh, inside the uh, inside the protein here. So this uh, bluish one here is the ion translocation domain, uh, which is in blue, and that's kind of what's in blue down here as well. Uh, and so that is what is actually moving the sodiums and hydrogens through the protein. Uh, and so. 
uh, yeah, we can just see how the sodium is uh, held in there. And this shows uh, an aspartate 157 and 156, where this one shows a 159. Uh, but we can see that those aspartates are, you know, close together. They're probably just talking about different isoforms of the uh, of the sodium hydrogen exchanger. And so I also wanted to show this because these sodium hydrogen exchangers are are known. Uh, for being involved in the pathogenesis of a lot of diseases. Uh, so pathogenesis meaning they're not necessarily the cause of the disease, but there is an effect on them. So uh, you may have heard of or even suffer from like Barrett's esophagus, uh, which can, you know, f cause like a lot of heartburn and things like that, uh, which makes sense because these sodium hydrogen exchangers are pumping uh, hydrogen out and so it would be pumping the hydrogen out into the esophagus and you know causing that acid reflux uh, and so we can see that they're involved in ulcers and cystic fibrosis uh, ulcerative colitis Crohn's disease uh, diarrhea uh, even gallstones uh, so a lot of different things uh, that these sodium hydrogen exchangers are involved in and so the paper that I got this from was actually sort of focusing on the sort of uh, cancer uh, so this actually does have gastroesophageal reflux disease and Barrett's esophagus here uh, but then you know esophageal adenocarcinoma esophageal squamous cell carcinoma so yeah these are you know involved in a lot of different diseases, including different types of uh, cancer, you know, pancreatic cancer, things like that. And so, yeah, these are important to sort of understand because, as I said, they're involved in a lot of different diseases. Uh, but anyway, that will be it for this video. So once again, I talked a bit about the sodium hydrogen exchanger, which pumps sodium into the cell hydrogen out of the cell, and I talked a bit about the uh, sodium-potassium ATPase, uh, which uh, pumps sodium out of the cell and potassium into the cell uh, down here on the basal membrane of these cells. Uh, and so, once again, uh, you know, these are important, obviously, just, you know, for understanding how absorption happens, but also because, you know, all these different diseases here uh, for the sodium potassium pump even just in the uh, in the intestinal tract and these sodium potassium pumps are found all over the body uh, you know I think I mentioned before you know they're found in like the brain and the muscles and the heart and things like that in particular you know for maintaining that that gradient which can then be used for action potentials but you know this sodium potassium pump is you know, sort of ubiquitous all over the body for maintaining those sodium and potassium gradients. And so different diseases can, uh, can affect those things. And we see here that these diseases can affect them in the gastrointestinal tract. And uh, like I said, we also saw down here that these uh, sodium hydrogen exchangers can uh, are involved in the pathogenesis of a lot of different uh, digestive diseases here. And so anyway, uh, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, like I said, in the next video, I'll talk a bit about calcium and magnesium absorption in the intestines. And then uh, that'll, pr well, I don't know, maybe I'll probably do one on some of the, uh, some of the other uh, things like iron and copper and things like that. So probably two more videos talking about uh, mineral absorption. Uh, but anyway, I will see you in the next video.